So when we first started working in Calais, we had a lot of people saying, you're bringing Wi-Fi? Why do refugees need Wi-Fi? How would you live your life without the internet if you were in a strange place, if you had lost connections, the everyday life that you had around you? It cannot be fair that some people have access and others don't. The first trip that I made to Calais back in 2015 was because my family was looking to foster a refugee and we had loads and loads of questions that weren't being answered from the media we were seeing that we decided to just go over there ourselves and check it out. So the Calais jungle is a refugee camp, a place where 10,000 people were living essentially on an old asbestos dump on the edge of Calais. Uh, the people there were trying to cross from France to the UK so they can claim asylum in the UK. The emergency in the jungle was acute. Every time I was there, there was constantly people asking me, can I borrow your phone? Can you hotspot me? Do you know where I can get Wi-Fi? And it was always these same questions. I thought there must be something out there that we can just buy that will bring Wi-Fi. It turns out it wasn't so easy. When I heard that this was a problem, I suddenly realised that my experience might allow me to help. And me and Rich came together with a plan to connect the Calais jungle. The project in, in Calais was really only really intended to be kind of like a one-off. But when we got the jungle connected, it had a huge impact on the people who were living in the camp. You know, we got to a point where new requests kept coming in and we had to find a way of making it sustainable. But you know, that takes lots of planning, it takes lots of logistics, it's expensive because you know, you have to fly with people and equipment and you know, we couldn't do many of those. Was there a way in which we could package them up and turn them into something we could just, you know, send to people that didn't require expertise to be able to do? And that's when the idea of Big Box was really born. Big Box is a Wi-Fi system in a box designed to give large groups of people access to the internet fairly and effectively as possible. So Big Box does the three things that you need to make the internet happen for a lot of people. Big Box has a 4G modem or can accept a satellite broadband connection to actually get a connection to the internet in the first place. It has a really powerful computer that can manage and control that internet connection. And it has kind of powerful Wi-Fi inbuilt that can connect up to 100 people. And it can be expanded up to 3,000 people. So to develop Big Box, we've used a combination of things that are kind of custom made. So there's lots of 3D printed elements here things that we kind of make ourselves. We use a lot of things that we can just kind of find um, and make creative use of things that already exist in the market. So what makes Big Box so easy to use and accessible is that the only controls are a single button that turns it on and off. What's radical and unique about the box is it allows many people to connect to what would be considered a not very good network. So it really makes the best use out of 3G or 4G cellular networks and allows you to connect a large group of people in fairly close proximity up to the internet. We want to make this available to anyone to set up a complex network um, as easy as it would be to set up a printer. We hope that Big Box will be applicable in any disaster uh, relief or humanitarian situation on the planet. So lots of our deployments with Big Box have been in Europe, from Dunkirk to Italy, Greece, Serbia. But kind of outside of Europe, our work is also growing and becoming kind of increasingly important. The scalability of Big Box in these regions is, is immense. And most recently, we've used Big Box to connect a clinic in an informal community in South Africa. Hi, Pastor Leonard, how are you? How's the Wi-Fi been? We heard you had a really bad storm recently. Has it been working OK? Uh, incredible. <laughs> yes, I said unbelievable because it was not affected at all. And what have you been using the Wi-Fi for? The, the learners, um, students in our village, I mean, uh, would use Wi-Fi to get information since now that they, they can't uh, attend school uh, regularly as normal due to uh, COVID-19 restrictions. So we have a massive range of partners from healthcare clinics to schools, to humanitarian delivery organisations and grassroots groups. I think Jangala has only really just begun to explore what partners we can work with and where the need is for our services. And I foresee us 
being able to support so many different projects and partners all around the world. There's a number of different types of situation all over the world that could kind of benefit. And for us, the really important thing is to be able to make sure that we've got the technology right so that we can scale and really allow Big Box to impact as many people and projects as possible. But we want to make Big Box and future technology be developed, ones that are really low cost, that are really accessible, that are kind of ethical with how they treat data and users. And nothing would make us prouder as an organization than if that people can use these tools to really have a positive impact on themselves, their neighbors, you know, and the communities around them.